Hello, everybody. It's the coach. This is Madden 20 on EA Sports. We're just about set to get started, and this ought to be a good one, between the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Tennessee Titans. I'll have scores around the league for you at the half, but it's time for a little football. So we'll hand it over to our broadcast team, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Just off the east bank of the Cumberland River and across the water from the Tennessee State Capitol building, there's a look at Nissan Stadium in Nashville. Nothing like the fanfare of introductions to an NFL game, and that was in evidence a moment ago. Fireworks, pyrotechnics, you name it. This crowd is ready as their guys get set to match up between the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Tennessee Titans. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Charles, we take a look at this Titan ball club entering play. They come in off their very first loss of the year, suffered a week ago. Yeah, it will not be a perfect season, but I'm interested to see how they bounce back now that they know that chasing the 1972 Dolphins is out the window. On the other side of the field for the visiting Bucks, they come off a disappointment last time out that put an end to their modest three-game win streak. Getting toward the halfway point of the NFL season. Week 7 is underway on EA Sports. This will be taken in at the 1. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. So out come the Bucks now for their first drive. They'll be led out by their 6'4 quarterback, the former number 1 overall pick in 2015, Jameis Winston. Coming off of a loss their last time out, I think he's just seeking to make a bigger impact on the game. He threw a touchdown pass, didn't throw an interception. I think he just wants to jump those numbers up in terms of flinging it around and letting his receivers get into the end zone. First down, Winston. And he's going to find his man out of the backfield. That's complete. It'll go as a loss of a yard on the game's first play. Second down. That pass play wound up for negative yardage, so here's second and 11. I'm coming for you. You mind. Switch, switch, switch. Throwing, Winston. Looking for his running back, and he's got him. Call it a gain of five, and it'll be third down. And a peek now at the offense for Tampa Bay. And they come off a tough loss last week, and what's their reward? A second straight road game. Rarely are teams happy about scheduling. They're always calling the league office saying, how come we have this game and that game? But when you're coming off of a loss on the road and you go right into another one, that's a difficult task. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. So the defense able to get off the field here on third down. And it's one of the goals of the game. They've got to be effective on passing downs. It's one of the few things defenses chart. How did we do on third down? That's a nice start for them in this one. The punt team on now as Pinion sends this one away. And no one there to stop it. Hits at the eight, but it carries all the way into the end zone for a touchback. So here are the Titans now for their first drive. They'll have a former Heisman Trophy winner calling the shots, hailing from the island of Oahu in Hawaii, Marcus Mariota. And no excitement, unless, he, unless you're on the defensive team of last week, in his numbers, because the only excitement he really generated was the one interception he threw. Yeah, no touchdown pass. Yeah, and his team wasn't real thrilled about that. And they lost the game. So, I know this week has been tough on him because he's been working hard. And that's caught inside the 30. And he takes it all the way down to the 28-yard line. They've got good playmakers on the offensive side of the ball. I don't know what happened last week to, to really hurt their performance and, and hold down their production, but I would dare say that this week in practice, there's a lot of talk about how they're going to increase their proficiency. And that was a good start getting the playmakers involved. You mentioned that to me pregame. That's what they did there. Yeah, I think a lot of people think the coaching staff really gets on them, and that's how they motivate them. Most of these guys are self-motivated. They have a lot of pride in their performance. So this will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards. Let's go. Play fake. Mariota. He'll take a shot for the end zone. And that'll wind up incomplete. 
Try to give his man room to run under it, but it's second down. And the offensive starters for Tennessee. And a big key is going to be how can these wideouts create separation from the defensive backs? Because we've seen some early success in the passing game in this one, and that's going to need to continue. So they'll come up after the incompletion for second down. Here's the first carry for Ezekiel Elliott. And he'll lose yardage here back at the 41. It'll be a loss of a full three yards there, and it also brings up third down. The Bucs with an extra defender now in the secondary here on third down. From the gun, Mariota. Finding his safety valve here. That's complete. It's a gain of five on the play, and it'll be fourth down. Well, that's certainly playing down in distance very well by the defense, isn't it? Take whatever you want underneath by all means. That's running out of steam, and it won't get there. He left it just short. Go. No go. good, and this will remain a scoreless game. Ready? NFL kickers nowadays, they make things look so easy because normally from this range, about two out of three, and this is not an easy kick. Yeah, 20 years ago, you get where he was in that 50 range, maybe a little over, and it's a big kick, but now we just, if they leave it short, you're like, whoa, what happened? And that's that's what we have here. Yeah, you're right. 20 years ago, we were saying run some more plays and get closer. Now we think they're definitely within range, and you're exactly right. When it comes up short, there has to be something that went wrong because they have plenty of leg. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. Movement there on the offensive line, a little quick, and a five-yard penalty. Start offense. So that'll back him up five. Ready. And that Ooh, false ready. start penalty certainly not helping their cause here. Second go. down and long. Check, check. From the shotgun, it's Winston. And that will be incomplete. Tried to dial up the long one way out there, but it'll be third down. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. He's got Evans. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Buccaneers. Mike Evans, his fifth touchdown now on the year, as his guys are able to strike first here in this opening quarter. As a former DB, you might not like to see that, but from a wide receiver's perspective, those are the plays they dream of. Correct on both counts, <laughs> all right? Because once he took off, I mean, let's face it, that should have been done in big sky country. There aren't any speed <laughs> limits out there? And off he went. Glad I wasn't the one trying to chase him. Eddie Pinheiro now for the extra point. And that one gives the Bucs a 7 to nothing lead. And following the touchdown now, it's Bradley Pinion on to kick this one away. This one fielded at the 5. And he'll take this across the 25. A couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. Tennessee offense about set and ready to go. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, get this a little time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. Second and 10 now from the 27. Here we go, here we go. Mariota. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. Now they face a third and 10 after back-to-back -back incompletions. Draw play, Elliott. And he'll be brought down at the 28, and that is well short of the first. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. On is the punt team now as this one sent away. 
It'll be a 51-yard punt that time. And the Bucs will get ready to go on offense. Here comes the Tampa Bay offense now heading back out onto the field. They've got a 7-0 lead in the football as well as they start out first and 10. Winston and the Bucs take over now first and 10 at their own 18. Jameis to throw it. He finds his target. It's Evans. And they work this well upfield across the 45. The catch and run pays off for 29 yards. A big hitter to start the drive has him up near midfield here for first and 10. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll fight his way forward to about the 48-yard line. The numbers for him from a week ago. 11 carries, 54 yards. And to me, the goal is the exact same thing as last week. Get him the ball early and often. I think he's got another big game in him in this one. On second and nine, Winston. Wesco, the tight end, making the catch. That catch good for five. It's third down. In need of a conversion on third down. They had the big play to start the drive. Not much sense. To throw is Winston. He'll buy some time right, and they'll get him down about three yards short of the first. And that one was relatively easy to see. I noticed that from up here. Yeah, it doesn't take a whole lot, does it? Sometimes you get multiples. What I always love on these offsides is when each side points at the other. Hey, you did it. No, you did it. They deciphered that one correctly. Here's a first and 10 now after they successfully drew them off sides. From the gun, Winston. And this is caught by Evans. And past the 35, he'll be dropped a yard or two shy of the 30. Ten yards there and a Buccaneer first down. Jameis now already over 100 yards passing in just this first quarter. It's first and ten. They run the counter. Person. He winds up getting only a couple there down to the 29. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he'll be brought down at about the 25 after a pickup of four. Offensive line wasn't set. There's the flag, and five yards back they go. Quarterback has to look around and make sure that his team is ready to go. Sometimes the quarterbacks go faster than is necessary. That's going to go down as a loss of five, and it brings up third down. On third down, Winston. He's going to hit his man out of the backfield, complete. And he'll be brought down at the 28, and that is well short of the first. It'll be a pickup of just two, and that's going to make it fourth down. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. And taking a gander at the NFL scoreboard in Minneapolis. Now you saw the score at the bottom of your screen a moment ago. We got a good one going on there. And he'll get across the 20 before he's brought down at about the 23-yard line. Remember to keep an eye on the ticker, of course, at the bottom of your screen for updates on that game and others around the NFL. Mariota and the Titans break the huddle first and 10 at their own 23. Working out of the gun, Mariota. He finds Corey Davis. A big play, Mariota to Davis. 59 yards. Excellent execution, and now they're set up nicely. Are they ever? Red zone? I wonder what the next play call is going to be, because after a big play like that, a lot of teams like to use the momentum to launch another one. So on the other side of the field now, it's first and 10 as they've got things rolling on this drive. From the red zone now, Mariota firing quickly here, and that's complete. And they'll work this down to the 15 for a pickup of four. That throw good for four. It's second down. Looking to throw again on second down. Mariota, and a quick throw here. That's complete. And they'll bring him down at the 13-yard line. In need of a conversion on third down. They had the big play to start the drive. Not much sense. 
Mariota to throw it. Yeah, that one's going to be knocked away and incomplete. And what did we talk with them about prior to the game? Their ability to move the chains, pick up first downs. So far, 0 for 3 on third down. If that continues, they'll have little chance of winning this one. The kick by Parkey is good. And they get themselves on the board here. It's 10 to 3. So three drives now for this offense, and that field goal gives them their first three points. So if you're an offensive coordinator and you're averaging a point a drive, you're in the wrong line of work, aren't you? <laughs> you got to find a way to yeah. unlock the key to these defenses and put some big points on the board. Face mask. Defense. Officials so cognizant of that call nowadays, but that one looked pretty easy. Yeah, you're right. They took out of their hands having to wonder whether it's a five-yard or a 15-yard inadvertent or not. Now it's a lot easier. You see it, you call it. The face mask moves them all the way out past the 40 now for first down. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. Big O.J. Howard, his intended target. And that'll bring up second down. And that's what he's got to be happy to have back. There wasn't a hole open in the zone. You'd have to think on early downs like that first down there, need to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, fortunately for him, got a couple more downs to play with. To throw, Winston. Oh, it's a screen pass. That's complete. And he will get this to the midfield stripe, but that's not going to be enough. He's a few yards short. Eight yards on the screen there, not enough. And it'll be fourth down. They dialed up the screen pass on third down, and for a second, it looked like it was all going to come together, and they had a chance to pick up a first down, but the defense got there and finished it off. That one sails out of bounds. The side judge will walk it off, and he says it went out of bounds at the nine-yard line. Nice punt. The field position game, such an overlooked facet, Charles, of an NFL game, but this offense, they're going to be pinned back. What an ideal punt. An ideal punt, and it leads to that term complimentary football because them doing that puts their defense in a great spot, doesn't it? Gives them a chance. If they want to be aggressive, try and maybe get a safety out of this whole thing, it puts them in that position. A first down carry by Elliott, and he got blown up on that play back at the 20. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. On second and 12, Mariota. And he will be hit from behind and run over. Wow. That's what I'm talking about. They just gave up a sack there, and if I'm not mistaken, they gave up four last week, didn't they? Yes. They're yeah, just looking really porous, aren't they? They really are, and I'm wondering if they're going to have to start thinking about keeping the tight end in, maybe a back, someone to help assist, because right now, their quarterback's been getting hit a lot in the last couple of games. And is this intercepted? It is. It's intercepted. Picked up by MJ Stewart. So it's third and long, and you know this is going to be a pass. So defensively, they're bringing an extra defensive back and just blanket the field. And this is an ill-advised throw right here as it winds up being picked off easily. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. Foul. Face mask. Defense. So that flag will cost them 15. On, and it doesn't matter anymore how you get the face mask. Any part of it, that's going to be 15 yards. And now it's first and 10. A big mistake, especially when you factor in the personal foul yardage. Winston. That's caught by Howard. It'll be a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll bring up a second in just about a few inches here. So second in inches after that first down completion went just shy of the marker. 10-3 our score after one here on EA Sports. They still need about the length of the football here, maybe a little less as they come up on second and inches. 
Here's Winston. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. He was trying to find O.J. Howard, and that'll make it third down. An incomplete pass on second down leads us to third and inches. Working out of the gun, Winston. And he's got a man. It's the tight end, Howard, complete. And he will have the first down before he's tackled at the 12. Winston now hitting on two-thirds of his passes, 10 for 15 so far, first and 10. Jameis again, caught by his tight end, Wesco. And he's able to work it here to the eight-yard line. Personal foul, roughing the passer, defense. Well, we looked at each other right away. We knew that flag was coming out. And I always enjoy the conversation post because officials always tell you, I don't want to throw the flag, but you caused the play. You did it. I had to. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Line of scrimmage. Again, the four-yard line. Second and goal. Winston now. And it's caught. And he's into the end zone for a Tampa Bay touchdown. From four yards out as the Buccaneers tack on to their lead. Boy, it's nice to have that big, reliable target you can go to. Each and every time. A lot of people see that position as a fallback. Throw it to them when all else fails. Not at all. This guy can make plays, and that's exactly what he just did. Yeah, play here for a touchdown. Point after, right down the middle. And the lead is now 17-3. And following the touchdown now, it's Bradley Pinion on to kick this one away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Now Corey Davis and the rest of his offense getting ready for their next drive, sitting right around the midpoint of the season on pace for 1,000 yards. Good year so far, and I'm sure film study being devoted to him a little bit more on the other side. They have to because the pace that he's carrying right now, if you're, if you're pushing a 1,000-yard pace as a receiver, that means he warrants your attention. And right now, precision is going on with their offense, kind of like that timepiece you wear on your wrist, you know, that good stuff. Got to knock that off somehow, chip away at that timing, change things up a little bit, and make them go to other things and make them do those things better. Yeah, try to make him uncomfortable. Not many teams have been able to do that so far this year. Now Elliott, and he will have the first down as they get him to the ground at the 37. The gain of four that time as the drive continues. There are a lot of different formulas to winning football, but one constant over the years, winning on third down. That pickup there was big because they had struggled throughout this one. They'll run on first down. T. Give him nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. They go play action. Mariota. That's into the hands of the tight end, Leggett. And now a fumble. The ball's out. But it looked like the Titans were able to recover, and indeed, they will keep possession of the ball. A call it luck or skill, whatever the case is, they're feeling good about just keeping the football there. Yeah, the biggest thing that they're calling it now, our ball. <laughs> I mean, they don't care if it was luck or skill. Boy, the panic that jumps up in your chest when that ball's on the ground, whether you get it or your teammate gets it, just as long as you maintain possession, that's all you're looking for. Play action now, Mariota. And he finds a man on the crossing round. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. Seven yards there and a first down. Mariota on first down. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. Corey Davis, the intended receiver. That'll bring up second down. They'll try again from the 36 on second and 10. Now back to the ground with Elliott. They call that a loss of six yards. And it's third down now. The Titans on third down. Just one for five to this point. This is third and 16. Now Mariota, a dump off to Elliott. And he'll be brought down, it looks like, right at the 40. It'll be a two-yard gain, and that'll bring up fourth down. 
Partner, I think that completion takes the definition of dink and dunk to a different level, doesn't it? It does, and the defense was right there, kind of played into their hands. And problems spreading to the punt team now. This one goes all the way into the end zone on the fly, so that'll come back to the 20. Mike Evans and the rest of the offensive unit heading back out there now. And he's racking up the yardage. You see the catches uh, defensively. What do you do here to stop a guy like this? You keep trying to change things up because nothing is really working. Whether you have a man on him, two people, you're showing different types of zone defenses combined with man-to-man -man coverages. Try and change things up and eventually get to the point where maybe you put enough people on him, they won't throw the ball to him anymore. And to give this time to the tailback. And they'll get eight out of this before being stopped at the 28. Line of scrimmage, the 28 now as they come up on second and a couple. Play action now, Winston. He finds his tight end, Howard, that's complete. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. They'll run it now, out of the gun. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. On second down, it's Person, and he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. He lost two there, and it's third down. The Bucks on third down, two for five to this point. This is third and eight. From the shotgun, it's Winston. He's got Evans. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. Three touchdown passes now in the ball game for Jameis Winston as the Buccaneers tack on to their lead. Now he's having a nice little first half here, partner. And it's a first half that leaves us anticipating what can still come. I mean, two touchdowns already here through the second quarter. There could be plenty more before this game is over. Pinheiro now to add the extra point. And the lead now to three touchdowns at 21 points. So the drive there, five plays, 80 yards. And it ends with a touchdown for the Bucs. Following the touchdown now, it's Bradley Pinion on to kick this one away. This will be taken in at the one. He'll bring it back to just about the 25, call it the 24-yard line. Now whistles, and we've got a man down. A man down here following the kickoff. We'll check on his status when we get back. The Titans offense set to begin the drive. They trail here by 24 points. Got to get going soon, you'd have to think, as they come up first and 10. First down run with Elliott going to go for about four. Second and six coming up. They give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. On second down now, it's Elliott. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. 13 yards is the pickup for Tennessee and a first down. They held him in check in the first half, but that's his longest carry of the game right there. So would this be the definition of fresh legs since he didn't get much done in the first half? Now he has a great opportunity. He's taking full advantage of it. And he will be brought down at about the 43 that time. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Taylor Luan, the former first-rounder from Michigan flag there. And that false start penalty certainly not helping their cause here. Second down and long. Here's Elliott, and he's dropped right at the 40. Gain of three. And the box with an extra defender in the secondary now on third down. To throw is Mariota. They'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. And they're going to mark him down short maybe by about a yard, if that. 
for a second there, I thought that might break big. Screen pass. Looked like it was coming together. Looked like there was an opening. Still ended up with a solid game. And this one will not be returnable as it sails out of bounds. And we shift to spotlighting Mike Evans, making his presence felt early in this one. First half, already over the century mark. How about the yards per completion, too? That's a pretty darn good number there. Number of catches, but he's shredding defense. Is getting big yardage with each and every one of them. They will get four yards here on the first down run, and that'll make it second and six. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. Now it's a bootleg with Winston. Into heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. Picked by Kevin Byard, and his guys are going to get the football at their own 47-yard line. That was a really nice interception. I think it illustrates the differences between playing man and playing zone. When you're in man, all you're focused on is the receiver in front of you. But when you're in zone, you're allowed to read the quarterback's eyes and go to the ball. That's exactly what happened on that play. Now Corey Davis and the rest of his offense getting ready for their next drive. He's been good so far to this point in the second quarter. Need to get him even more involved, maybe? I would agree with that, definitely. Uh, yeah, it's not even a question for me. The way he's playing, he's doing a nice job. Increase things. More touches, more opportunities. Maybe that can reverse things on the scoreboard for them. They'll try to ratchet things up then maybe here in the second quarter. A second down throw here for Mariota. Yeah, he will find Davis. That's complete. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. A gain there of 30 big ones. That's an excellent read right there. Saw cover one. That means it's just a single high safety. So you know if you throw the ball to the outside part of the field, help is going to be a little bit late getting there. And he puts one out there for a big-time completion. And he'll take it down here just shy of the 15 at the 16-yard line. A reminder, once we hit halftime, as we do all season, we'll send it down to Jonathan Coachman in Orlando. He'll have all the stats and scores from games in progress around the NFL. The best multitasker in the business, the coach. And they're going to lose some on this play. Being knocked back to the 18. This will be a two-yard loss on the play. And that's going to lead to a third down. They'll throw again. Mariota. Quick hitter here. It's complete. Now the Bucks going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Now Cody Parkey out to try the field goal. And Parkey's kick is good. And the deficit drops now from 21 down to 18. So unable to convert for the touchdown inside the red zone, but they do come away with three. Yeah, it's a 32-yarder. That's essentially an extra point nowadays, right? Because it's 33 as a general rule for these guys. So it should be a simple kick. But you know what's really strange nowadays? When they miss an extra point, I think they carry that with them longer than missing a field goal because an extra point's supposed to be automatic. Absolutely, and I would think even field goals inside of 30 yards, even though they're substantially shorter than a PAT, it, would, it just has a different feel, doesn't it? A different it? feel, a different vibe. That's what I get from all the kickers I talk to. They always say, if I miss an extra point, that's the one that bothers me. Anymore. Call it a loss of two on the play. And it'll be second and 12. And now Winston wants to talk this one over as he'll take a timeout. As he'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. Throwing again on second down. Winston. And that going to be incomplete. A lot of contact, no call, and it's third down. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. And he'll give it here to his running back. And not even back to the line of scrimmage this time as they're on him quickly once more. Here's Bradley Pinion now as he's on to punt for Tampa Bay. Now he's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And when it's said and done, it's a 58-yard punt. And it'll be Titan football. Check 
Mariota now to throw on first down. And that is incomplete. Took a shot there on first down, but he couldn't reel it in. After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. 10th carry now for Allian. And he'll just keep two hands on the football as he'll be taken down after a short pickup. Now Tennessee going to use the second of their timeouts as they stop it here with just under 40 ticks to go in this first half. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. Let's look like another three and out here, and at some point, got to be able to put together a drive to keep your defense from having to go right back out on the field. I feel like things are starting to unravel a little bit, and we're not even at halftime. Call that a 46-yard punt with a net of 40 on the six-yard return. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. A look at Jameis Winston now as he gears up to lead this offense again. He does have the one interception, Charles, but I think that's been more than offset by the three first-half touchdown passes. I would agree with you. There is a blemish, but when you've thrown three touchdown passes to try and erase it, that's a little bit better than the ratio that all NFL coaches are seeking from their quarterbacks, and he's giving it to them. They'll take the three to one? Every single time. And down he goes at the 45 after a pickup of nine. Yeah, the Bucks forced yeah. to use their third and final timeout as they stop it with 16 seconds to go in half number one. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he will have the first down as he's brought down up near midfield. So we reach halftime in what's been a fairly one-sided game so far. As we send you down to Orlando, where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. A lot to get to here as some of the division races starting to take shape as we look around the NFL here in week number seven. Lastly, let's check on one final game for you. And you can see they are scoreless as they play the second quarter. In our game has been Jameis Winston, who's been on target in the first half. His three touchdown passes have his guys out in front as we hand things back over to Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. The Bucks with a lead, and they'll get the football first as the second half is underway. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. And here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now from all the work he's getting. Now that sends him two yards in the wrong direction and leads to second down. But these guys are going to chop into that deficit. They got to do a much better job in the run game. Caught behind the line of scrimmage. No yardage would be found. First play of the drive goes the wrong way. Here's second and 12. Kill, kill, kill. Turn up. Mariota. And this is incomplete. Corey Davis, the intended receiver, and it's third down. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. We saw this a lot in the first half, and it continues. These receivers just not able to get much separation. So that means they have to win the 50-50 balls. They've got to go up with the defender and find a way to start coming down with them. And this time, contact and another incomplete pass. On now is the Titans punter. 
as he's on for the fifth time here today. His first punt, 48 yards. This one looks equally as good. A big boot that time, 57 yards the official distance. And possession will switch hands first and 10. Here comes the Buccaneers offense. They get their first reps of the second half. They were able to get the ball back here, didn't surrender any points. Now they'll look to add to that lead. And how about the boost the defense gave them? Going right out on the field, shutting them down, not giving up any points, and turning the ball back over. They want to do their part now and show them a little respect and some gratitude <laughs> by scoring some points. And to get a little more cushion. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Here's Winston. There's the Penn State man. It's Chris Godwin. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. A good pick up there of 20 yards. Quarterbacks love slant routes because the receivers are breaking right into their line of vision. And receivers love them as well because they're getting the ball on the move and able to catch it and try and get upfield and gain additional yardage. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. 10 yards there and a Buccaneer first down. They'll run it now out of the gun. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. On second down, it's Person, and he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. That backs him up one yard and brings up third down. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense, countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft and able to really make a big-time play for their defense. And he's able to pick up the first before he's taken down at the 27. They're able to convert with a gain of four. Jameis now on first down. Wesco, the tight end, making the catch. And they'll work it inside the 15-yard line before it's all said and done. First down, Tampa Bay there, a gain of 13. And to give this time to the tailback. And he'll get about three just outside the 10, stopped at the 11. On second down now. It's Person, and a nice pick up there as he'll take it from the 10 down to the five-yard line. Ninth play coming up here on this drive. This is third and a yard. From the gun, Winston. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Buccaneers. Jameis Winston with his fourth touchdown pass of the afternoon as the Buccaneers tack on to their lead. Well, it was third and one. I was expecting run so much for that. They pass it, they score it. That had the feel of the head coach telling the offensive coordinator, you've got four downs here. We're going to go for it on fourth down unless there's a disaster on third. Go ahead and take a shot if you want to. And he gratefully accepted the opportunity and did exactly that. If they didn't get it there, that had the feel that they would come back and try it on fourth down. This one taken from the seven. And he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. Tennessee offense about set and ready to go. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. He lost nine there. That's really going to set him back for second down. They go play action here on first down. Montez Sweat just would not be denied. That's a loss of seven. 
Man, he got in there so quickly, Charles. What could the offense have done to adjust and account for that? But what you're hoping is that you figure out and you see and get a clue that maybe there's going to be some pressure coming at you, and you change the blocking schemes. Maybe you go to max protection. The biggest one is maybe you bring your running back in to try and keep you clean. But in that case, that didn't happen. Zero accountability, and a sack resulted. Third and long here for Mariota. The defense loves to hang. Pressure gets to him, and down he goes. Back at the four-yard line. Credit the sack to Vita Vea. It's been a tough one all game long for this offensive line. They're already down big, and now you know they're just going to come after the quarterback in a big way, don't you? Yeah, they, don't, they just can't get out of their own way right now. And it's created an avalanche, and an avalanche is coming right on top of them. So a short drop, but he's able to get it out, and this is a good kick. Returnable here from the 38. A good return there, call it 13 yards. Let's go, let's and the go, Buccaneer offense will be set up well as they take over. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. First down Tampa Bay there, a gain of 13. He's obviously a bit of a shorter running back. Sometimes when he goes up the middle like that, he, he gets lost in there, and then he pops out for 10, 20 yards. I actually asked NFL linebackers if that was true. Do you actually lose sight of some of the smaller running backs? And all of them confirmed that that can be a problem. Think of it this way. Two of the top running backs in NFL history, Emmitt Smith, Barry Sanders, both 5'10". From the 30 on second down, Winston. And that's going to wind up incomplete. However, we do have a flag down. Let's check in with our referee. I think you'd agree that looked like the right call from up here. No doubt about it. What everyone has to understand is that the officials are going to be right on the play each and every time. You may not like the call, but they're usually spot on. And he's brought down just outside of the 10 at the 11. It's a four-yard pickup, and it'll make it second down. Well, they're unable to convert that into much, but it's never a bad idea to try to get the ball into a tight end of his caliber's hands and see what kind of disruption he can cause. To throw again on second down, Winston. And his throw's going to be incomplete. He was looking for Chris Godwin that time, and it'll bring up third down. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. This will be caught at about the six. And he couldn't quite get there. Tackled down at the one. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Again, it's Winston. Toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Another shot from the one on second and goal. They'll throw again. Winston. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. The sack by Harold Landry, the former Boston College Eagle. When you're this close to the goal line, you've got to expect pressure from the defense, so the ball's got to come out fast. Got to get out of his hands quicker. Third and goal, Winston. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? Zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you got to try and find something. There's nothing available there for him. That drive took him inside the 10. Good job defensively to hold him to three. Yeah, I like how you did that. Give a little tip of the cap to the stop troops there because they didn't give up a touchdown in that situation, right? Made them kick the field goal. And yeah, points went against them, but that feels a whole lot better running off the field. And here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field. And right now, these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting, because three straight drives have ended with him putting the football away. Yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. So now a fresh set of downs, first and 10 after roughing the passer. 
Here's Mariota. This one caught by Davis. And he'll be brought down. Oh, that's a face mask. Certainly looked like it indeed. Here come the flags. Defense. So they'll take the yardage and tack on 15 more for the face mask. Talk about a play that absolutely costs you in the end. Just trying to do your job, right? Trying to get him on the ground. Next thing you know, they're marching off another 15 against your squad. Sick guy! Check the guy! After the penalty, it's Allian. And he'll be brought down somewhat awkwardly here and a late flag as well. I think this one's going to be a face mask. So they will accept the penalty and move forward. Automatic first down. And now it's first and 10. A big mistake, especially when you factor in the personal foul yardage. This is Elliott. And he'll get this one down to about the 10-yard line. A gain of three, second down. On second and seven, Mariota. Davis fighting. He loses the football. On third and one, here's Mariota. And this is caught. For the moment, it's a touchdown, but multiple flags down, so let's sort this out. So reverse the celebration. We'll see if they have something else in their bag of tricks. And isn't that always tough to watch when they score and you see the excitement, and then when they realize those points aren't going to count, can they get it back together and find their way back to the end zone? So his third field goal of the ball game brings him a bit closer, but there's no question. They need to start turning some of these threes into sixes. And sevens and probably even eights. You know, as a kicker, you just head out when you're called upon, so he's done his job. It's the rest of the offense that needs to get it in gear. They want to close this gap. The Bucks offense set to begin their next possession. This is sort of what you would call a put-away drive, isn't it? They score here, especially a touchdown. It's almost out of reach. It certainly feels that way, and I think that they're going to call their plays accordingly because what you really want to do, even though you know the scoreboard is still up there and the game's going to go on, in fact, you can take the spirit away from another team, that their drive and will to come back and win can be taken with another score right here. It's still third quarter, but you just get that feel. Yeah, they're teetering right there on the brink, aren't they? 19 yards to pick up there. Move the chains. Strip the ball. First down. Strip that ball. Winston now to throw on first down. And his throw's going to be incomplete. The intended target was Chris Godwin, and that'll bring up second down. Ball on the 42 as they come up second and 10. Jameis again. Open man is Howard, the tight end. That'll be a loss of a yard, and it leads to a third down. The last completion actually lost a yard, so now they'll need to convert on third down. To the air again with Winston. And a throw there going to be incomplete. Here's Bradley Pinion now. He's been terrific so far. And he gets it away. A directional kick going toward the sideline. And this is a beauty as that ball is going to angle out at the six-yard line. And for an offense that is struggling, this is not where you want to start from. Great punt. Fantastic punt. And for all those who wonder, what do punters do during the course of practice each and every day? The best ones do what we just saw there. Work on positioning the football and helping their team. Now they air it out to start the drive, and it's complete. And he will be taken down, but a big pickup there on what's going to be the final play of the third quarter. Back now in Nashville, a lot of folks starting to make their way to the parking lot. Their guys trail big here to begin quarter number four. Mariota now, five straight completions here in this second half, first and ten. Throwing is Mariota. They'll set up the screen to Elliott. Push it 
passer defense. Maybe a frustration penalty there because he's picked them apart. They've tried their best to get to him and they haven't done it successfully. A penalty is a result of that hit there. To throw Mariota. And he held on to it too long. A coverage sack. Down he goes. Vita Vea able to record his fifth sack of the season. We've been around this league for a while, and many coaches never pull their starting quarterback, almost no matter the situation. In this case, though, I think he's got to make a decision. He's taking a pretty good beating out there. Yeah, and with the deficit, maybe not wanting to risk an injury. Now, meanwhile, here's a second down throw that's knocked away and incomplete. It was Quincy Wilson that time was able to make the play defensively. Now Mariota. Now they go screen. It's complete. 14 yards is the pick up there, but it'll still lead to a fourth down. When you run a screen pass really well, you got to like the look of it because so many parts come together to make it work well. The offensive linemen where they're faking people out, the back slipping out there, catching the football, then all of them going to get touchdown Titans. Corey Davis, his fourth touchdown on the year. And the Titans are able to cut into that deficit. So the quarterback drops to throw, looks over, and boom, a guy that wide open, he has to be thinking, wait a minute, this is some kind of a dream. This is too easy. Yeah, a great dream, one you don't want to wake up from, but for the defense, almost feels like there was a bust in coverage. Cody Parkey is on now for the point after. And that'll cut the lead down now to 18. So the drive there, five plays, 80 yards. And the result in the end, a Titans touchdown. This is fielded at the goal line. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. Here comes the Tampa Bay offense now heading back out onto the field. They've got the lead. Last time had to punt it, though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. Ah, the leverage. big guys up front. You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer, create space for our runners, and let's go ahead and get these guys. Low man wins. Let's go do it on this drive. <laughs> we'll watch that leverage on this drive. Ten yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old-school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run, got behind his pads, bowled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. So up through three quarters, no reason to lighten up now. Uh, he's still rumbling, isn't he? Still looking fresh in this one despite the heavy workload. But you and I both know, well-conditioned, and he did tell us that he thrives on being at his peak late in ball games. And running room scarce here. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. Now a handoff here to his running back. And down he goes at the 49, a three-yard pickup. They'll run it now out of the gun. And taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. Do my eyes deceive me, or is he getting stronger as this game moves along? Burst seems just as good here in the fourth as it was way back in the first, doesn't it? I do believe someone put a lot of time in in the offseason and continues to condition during the season in order to continue to carry the ball at this rate. Big Andrew Billings there on the stop. They run a draw here on second down. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. Now play number seven of this drive, but it's a tough third and nine. Now a give right side. Person. And they went the wrong way there. Losing yardage back at the 43-yard line. That'll set him back with a loss of three on the play. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. He continues to struggle to find a crease to break off a big one and might need to just put that aside and just try and ram his way forward and get what he can. 
And this will be out of bounds, and they spot it at the, at the 15 yard line. Not too bad. Now the Titans getting set to go. Last time they were out here, they had the benefit of good field position, led to a touchdown. This time, they're going to have to work for it. They are, but with that last drive that culminated in a touchdown, I think they carry that confidence into this one. Doesn't matter where you start with the football now, they have to feel great about their opportunity. Face mask, defense. So that one will be accepted. And now it's first and 10. A big mistake, especially when you factor in the personal foul yardage. From the gun, Mariota. And that is incomplete. Another incompletion. You know, it's a wonder he's still moving around back there the number of times he's been sacked. Yeah, he's staying out there, isn't he? And you don't think about it much in a game like this, but he's showing incredible leadership. Still competing, still fighting, not taking himself out of a ball game that appears lost. And he gets this one go. to midfield before he's brought down. An 11-yard pickup for the Titans and a first down. Mariota now from the 50. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Got the hand caught up in the grill of the face mask. 15-yard penalty. So tough for a defender. You're trying so hard to make a play, and the way that these offensive guys can move around, sometimes your hand gets into the wrong place. And now it's first and 10. A big mistake, especially when you factor in the personal foul yardage. They'll run it now out of the gun. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. Second and five now. Mariota, and he rifles one incomplete. They come up now third and five following the incomplete pass. Working out of the gun, Mariota. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Shaquille Barrett put that sack by his name in the stat sheet. Brandon, I think you understand the type of afternoon this offensive line is having. It is a long one for them. Long for you to spend it with me. Long for them trying to block those guys. They've given up a whole lot of sacks, and the speed and quickness that defensive line is eating them alive. Now they go for it on fourth, but this one is going to wind up incomplete. The Titans try it, but ultimately they fail on fourth down. And the Buccaneers' defense holds, and they get the football back. So a tough pill to swallow there. A would-be touchdown pass in and out of his hands on fourth. Sometimes it just comes down to execution, doesn't it? Because we're always questioning, should they go for it? Should they not? Is it the right play call? Is it not? In this situation, everything was right except for the finish. You have to catch the ball and convert. Running game working. They'll stick with it on first down. And he's up over midfield and down into Tennessee territory. A nice run there, nine yards, and it'll be second down. On second down, it's Person, and he'll take it down shy of the 45 at the 46. Two yards, good enough for a first. And to give this time to the tailback, the big man, Jarrell Casey, in on the stop. And he'll give it here to his running back. Now a timeout being called as there's an injured Titan down on the field. Well, he gets attended to. We'll step aside. And now on third down, they'll need to get it to the 36 to pick up the first. Here we go. From the shotgun, it's Winston. And he's got a man. It's the tight end, Howard, complete. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Titans' 31-yard line. He's been the go-to guy. They needed a big play there on third down, went his way, it worked out. Doesn't matter whether they've scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way open and completing the connection. 
A run on first down, but it's not going to get him much. Maybe a yard, and that's all. Rashawn Evans out of Alabama had the tackle defensively. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So it's Buccaneer football as we welcome you back. And the scoreboard on their side, they're just looking to melt away these final couple of minutes and put this one in the left-hand column. A short gain here, maybe a yard to the 29. Eighth play of the drive, forthcoming, and they need eight yards on third down. Now a handoff here to his running back. And an alley to run. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. I've got an idea. Let's skip racing to the airport at the end of this game. Let's go to the post-game press conference. I have a feeling that the quarterback of this winning team is going to be giving a whole lot of credit to the running game and the offensive line. Yeah, I was just going to say the offensive line, yes, carrying the ball has been key, but those guys up front, they've made a lot of space. No gain on the play there. Second down. A lot of scoring. There's no doubt about that in this one, Charles. Points, they were not at a premium. They were pretty easy to come by. <laughs> they were, but it was fun, wasn't it? Because both teams finding ways to click. And you know people who love this game. They also love baseball games that are 14 to 11 <laughs> with three or four home runs mixed in. So for Tampa Bay, the win moves them up to 5-2 and two now on the year. And they will head back home next week. Meanwhile, for Tennessee, they fall to defeat for the second time this season. And they'll get a chance to redeem themselves at home next week. I'm Brandon Gordon. Certainly have to thank Charles Davis, my broadcast partner, and our entire...